As I've covered many times on this channel before, there are millions of animals in the wrong place. Whether intentional or by accident, we've been transporting all different types of animals outside of their native ranges. Sometimes these animals can have a negative effect on their non-native ecosystems, but in some rarer cases, they have little to no noticeable impact. In this video I will be focusing on both of these types of non-native creatures, and I will also be focusing on the lovely state of Florida. Florida has a very unique climate, which also means that it has a very unique ecosystem. It has many native creatures that can't be found throughout the rest of the US, but unfortunately it's also a mixing pot for invasive species. Florida is one of the worst affected areas in the world when it comes to invasive species, and because of its climate, many invasive reptiles now call Florida home. In this video I will be focusing on these reptiles, as I'll be going through five introduced and invasive reptiles that can be found in Florida. And for our first reptile invader we can head to Central and South America, as we have the spectacled caiman. Now this reptile has quite a large range, and can be found throughout many of the famous rivers across Central and South America. Famously, this creature is in the same family as the American alligator, but it is slightly smaller. They reach a maximum size of around 2.6 meters, and although this size is rather impressive, it is by no means the largest caiman, as that title goes to the black caiman. In its native range, it has a varied diet, mostly consisting of fish, crabs, and small mammals, but they are famously unfussy, and they eat most things that they come across. Although these reptiles are native to Central and South America, some individuals have made the trip north, and there is a small population in Florida. Florida today. The first spectacled caiman was spotted in Florida in 1950, and today there are small breeding populations in localized areas. Luckily for these reptiles, Florida has the perfect habitat for them, and there are famously plenty of marshes, lakes, and canals where they can thrive. But of course these reptiles are not alone. Florida is home to two large native crocodilians, being both the American alligator and the American crocodile. Both of these crocodilians are larger than the spectacled caiman, and they would easily overpower them. This often means that spectacled caimans have to pick their fights, and this has limited their expansion. Luckily their need for a warm climate has limited them to South Florida, and there is little chance of them moving into other states. Of course they do have a negative effect on the ecosystem, both by competing with the native crocodilians, and also by feeding on native mammals and fish, which are also struggling because of other invasive species. So even though the spectacled caiman is a very interesting predator, it really doesn't have a place in Florida. But for our next invader we can travel to Asia and some Pacific Islands, as we have the Tokay gecko. Now this gecko is possibly the most beautiful gecko in the world, and it is also one of the largest. It can reach a maximum length of around 40 centimeters, and only the giant leaf-tailed gecko and the New Caledonian giant gecko are larger. As well as being large and beautiful, they are also very loud. They have a very distinctive call and this call is in fact how they got their name. Tokay geckos are nocturnal creatures, and they are great insect hunters. They will often move into urbanized areas, because the light from these areas attracts insects, which these geckos are more than happy to pick off. Because of this gecko's beauty, it's commonly kept in the pet trade, but in most cases, this is a very bad idea. This species is notoriously aggressive and territorial, and can inflict an extremely strong bite. In most cases, they can't be handled, and their bites can easily draw blood. If you are looking to keep a gecko, it's best to go with a leopard gecko, as they have a much mild temperament, which is one of the reasons why they're the most popular gecko in the pet trade. Because the Tokay gecko can be a difficult creature to have as a pet, some people choose to release them into the wild, and it's thought this is how they made their way into Florida. The first Tokay gecko was spotted in Florida in 1965, and today they are mostly found around the Everglades. It's thought that some were purposely introduced to control cockroaches, and although they will do a very good job at this, they will eat other native animals, of which some are endangered. They'll prey on nesting birds and rodents, and some of these even been known to target snakes. Florida does have its own species of gecko, but this species of gecko is much smaller and could even fall prey to the toke gecko. There are thought to be 17 species of gecko calling Florida home, but only one of these are native. This just underlines the invasive species problem in Florida, and although it's not the toke gecko's fault, it's a very unwelcome invader. But for our next species, we'll be heading to Central America, as we have the black spiny-tailed iguana. Now this reptile is one of the more interesting species of iguana, both because of its dinosaur-like looks and also its size. Males can reach a maximum size of around 1.3 meters, and this makes them the largest species in their genus. In its native range, this lizard does have a few predators to hide from, such as birds of prey and snakes. 
But if these predators do spot this iguana, it is by no means game over. The black spiny-tailed iguana is extremely athletic, both being excellent climbers and extremely fast runners. They are in the Guinness Book of World Records as the fastest lizard, with a maximum sprint speed of 34.6 km per hour. That means this lizard could outrun most of you watching, and makes it a very hard prey item to target. This lizard's diet changes throughout their lifetime. Juveniles tend to have a meatier diet, whereas adults mostly feed on vegetation. This species was first spotted in Florida in the 1970s, where it had a small population on an island on the west coast. It soon made its way to adjacent islands and eventually made its way onto the mainland. Of course it is not the only invasive iguana that can be found in Florida, but it is one of the most damaging. As adults mostly eat vegetation, they don't pose too high a risk to native species, but they can threaten a large native reptile. Famously sea turtles lay their eggs on Floridian shores, and these eggs can be very vulnerable. The black spiny-tailed iguana is one of the lizards that targets these eggs, and this can have a devastating effect on sea turtle numbers. This the reptile has few natural predators in Florida, but luckily American alligators have been able to limit their numbers to some extent, so this really is a species to look out for, because if they can form a large population, it could be devastating for more native species. But for our next reptile, we can head to Sub-Saharan Africa, as we have the red-headed rock agama. This lizard may be one of the hardest reptiles to identify on this list. Each specimen can look very different to each other, as their colour depends on their age and their gender. Males in the breeding season are famously very colourful, and are some of the most beautiful lizards on this planet. Females and juveniles on the other hand are quite dull and can easily be mistaken for other lizards. In the wild these reptiles are primarily insectivores and to be able to catch their prey they need to be very quick on their feet. As well as being very quick they are also very aggressive as males are very territorial and will fight each other to claim their space. Because of their relatively small size and the vibrance of the males you can understand why these lizards were popular in the pet trade. It's thought that they came to Florida in the 1970s through the pet trade and then once again again found their way into the wild. In their new homes they have found many other invasive creatures, and of course as I've covered other invasive reptiles. Even though this species is relatively small, it is causing a big problem. Its love of insect prey is the main problem, because it can target some endangered species. Florida is home to many native species of butterfly, such as the zebra swallowtail and the endangered monarch butterfly. This lizard is more than happy to target these insects, and of course this can have a major negative effect on their numbers. So even though this lizard can be very striking and beautiful. It causes major problems for native insects and butterflies. But for our final species, we will be heading over to Asia, as we have the oriental garden lizard. Now just like the previous lizard, this species can also be very hard to identify, as once again they do change colour throughout their lifetime. Famously during the breeding season, males are a bright orangey red colour, and the females find this colour irresistible. This lizard has a massive distribution, and has also been introduced into other countries apart from the USA. In Singapore it has caused major problems, as they are currently a threat to the native green crested lizard. They adapt very well to urban areas and are very good at outcompeting other lizards. In some cases they will even feed on other lizards. Two of the more common lizards that they often prey on are both the common house geckos and the day geckos. This predatory behaviour means that they can cause major problems and this is one of the reasons why they're not very welcome in Florida. They were thought to be first introduced in 1978 and since then approximately 100 specimens have been collected. So far it's been hard to tell if they've had an impact at all but this is due to their relatively small population. If we judge them on what's happened in other areas, they could be a major problem in the future, and this means it could be very bad news for the native lizards. Of course there are many other invasive reptiles that could be found in Florida, with some of the main examples being large snakes, and of course the tegus. I have covered these creatures in other videos, which is why they're not included in this one. If you know of any other notable ones that I've missed, then let me know down in the comments below. But thank you for watching, I hope you enjoyed. If you liked it, please leave a like, and subscribe if you want to see more videos like these. But until next time, goodbye. Bye.